Hey guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'll be explaining and demonstrating the Logic Stock Compressor's sidechain parameters, which are here. You can sidechain perfectly fine without these, but they are interesting and can be really useful in the right situations. It uses a filter with your sidechain, so you can sidechain a certain frequency range. Doing this will change a lot of how the sidechain works, for example you can use it to sidechain just the low end of the kick with the bass. This is available on all the compressors here, but the Platinum is the only one which has peak and RMS whereas none of the others do. So let's get these out of the way first. Peak is basically normal compression, but RMS, which stands for root mean squared, responds to the average loudness of a signal. It will only compress the signal if it passes the threshold for a sustained amount of time. This means that very quick sudden peaks won't be compressed. That's great if you want to preserve dynamics, but not so good if you, well, don't want to preserve dynamics. I tend to just use peak as it sounds more natural and a bit more consistent. And above this we have the sum and max buttons, which are detection buttons. This is for when you're working in stereo. Max will compress both left and right sides if either side passes the threshold, whereas sum will only compress if the combined levels of both channels exceed the threshold. I always just use max for a similar reason as before, as it sounds a little bit more consistent and you can be more accurate with it in my opinion. But in this example we're actually working in mono, so it doesn't really matter. Now the fun part, the filter section. First of all, we have the arming section. It's naturally turned off, but we can turn it on or listen to monitor the sidechain signal, which is very useful. Below this are the frequency and filter knobs. The filter lets you change between several filters, low pass, band pass, high pass, parametric and high shelving. You use these in conjunction with one another, so you choose what filter you want, then select your frequency. So for this to work, we need to actually sidechain it to something. So I'm going to sidechain this bass that I've got here to my entire drum kit up here. So we go to the top right into sidechain and then we find what we want to sidechain it to. I'm just going to put some quick sidechain settings on here. Going to go for about a 4 to 1 ratio. Really quick attack. I tend to avoid 0 milliseconds because some sounds don't like it. Then off to a hard knee and then a medium sort of release. But we can time the release with the tempo of the song. And we'll adjust the threshold in a second. So I've just left this as is, I've left the filter on a low pass, but I'm going to boost the frequency to 20,000 Hz, and here's what that would just look like as an EQ for reference. So this won't really be doing anything as it stands, we're currently sidechaining it to the whole drum kit. But as we begin to move this, we'll start to lose some of those frequencies, so we'll start to lose the hi-hats, the claps and snares, and moving all the way down to the kick in the low end. So I'm going to hit play, adjust the threshold, and then we'll start to drop the frequency down. But let's just turn the filter on to start so it actually does something. Okay, so that's actually quite a lot, but we're going to lose a lot of that energy when we start to move the filter down. So let's just have a listen. So as you could see, the further down we went, the more energy we lost. We were removing those frequencies that we were sidechaining to until we were left with very little. By doing this, we can isolate different sections of the kit. This is really useful if you're wanting to sidechain to a channel with multiple instruments, as well as very precise sidechaining for a single sound. We'll try and set this up as a traditional kick sidechain. So for that, we'll still need our low pass, and we'll need to set this to around 100-110 Hz. This kick is pretty deep, so there isn't much else going on in that space to interfere with it. So we can see we're getting compression on each kick hit here, which is perfect. Compared to before, when it was constantly being compressed because there was so much going on with the hi-hats on top of everything. If I were to set this frequency any higher, then it would become inconsistent as there are claps every other beat, which would increase the amount of compression on those beats. There are also the eighth note hi-hats, which will make the sound more odd as well. So by doing this, we've effectively side-chained to the kick of a full drum kit recording. You can use this if you're using or have created a sample loop where all the individual sounds aren't split. And when we hit play just then, we could see that the compression was only taking place on those kick hits. We can of course experiment and change the filter as well. Maybe we do want to side chain to the eighth note hi-hats. We could select the high pass filter here and remove everything below 15k or so. This will definitely be less obvious than before, especially as the frequencies here don't overlap.
We can also do something similar with the bandpass and use it to isolate the snare. So the bandpass will remove any frequencies outside of the range that we've selected. Of course, this will never be exact for any of these individual parts as they will have frequencies outside of their main range. But you can make generalizations like this to narrow down the frequency spectrum. To help with this, you also have the Q setting down here, which is the bandwidth. This changes how wide or narrow the filter is and also changes the shape of the high pass and low pass filter. So here are some examples. A lower setting reduces how aggressive the cut is and if you make it higher, it can start to add a resonant frequency. This can be useful as it can enhance the side chaining, like on our bass demonstration, but do be careful as it can make things sound a little bit unnatural. So let's just try and find our snare frequency. To be honest, it's going to be very wide as the snare has a very wide frequency range, but a big bulk of it's going to be around the 200 Hz region, so let's start there. So we can see it's peaking quite a lot here, just on every other beat. So in and around this sort of frequency is where a bulk of the energy for the snare is. This is still being compressed by sounds other than the snare, like there's definitely some kick in there, but we can help to narrow that down using the Q setting down here. So we can make it narrower to narrow down our scope. So let's have a look whilst I tweak the bandwidth. So we can see we're getting less energy as I'm making it narrower as I increase it. and we're getting more energy as we're making it wider. The next mode is the parametric EQ, which is quite similar to the band pass, but we get to use the gain function here. This essentially increases or decreases the amount of side chaining that is occurring. So we can hear there is less compression going on now. And now there is significantly more. It's essentially boosting or cutting the selected frequency range, which in turn creates more or less compression. It doesn't actually increase the volume, but it increases it to the compressor. This is quite useful if you want to use extreme side chaining. Lastly is the high shelf, which looks like this on our EQ. This is for increasing or decreasing the amount of compression if you're side chaining the higher end of the signal essentially. It will increase or decrease everything above a set frequency. Again, there is the gain function so you can change the amount of compression you want. This is useful if you want some subtle side chaining between higher end sounds like a melody line side chain to the vocals as it will let the airiness of the vocals come through a little bit more. So here it's side chaining it to everything above this frequency, which is quite a lot as we can see there's a lot of energy there. These side chain parameters can be very helpful, but it isn't always needed. I would recommend using it for precise side chaining, such as the demonstration of using it to isolate frequencies and instruments, or for very aggressive side chaining to really duck something out. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have any questions, please leave a comment or contact me via my website. Thanks a lot for watching. Cheers.